Yo, this hot, this the spot, there it is, pod.com. We're interviewing the best comedians, so tune in quick and get your ears receiving them. We're talking about life and life to stream right to you from the microphone right to your home, dude. Side note, this might get embarrassing, but no, don't sweat, yo, because there it is. That's one funky theme song. People are going to be having babies listening. There it is. I'm Jason Farm, your host. Let's do this fun episode. Thank you for being here. Uh, in this episode, I talked to world champion beatboxer Kayla Milady from hip hop improv troupe North Coast, a really great improv team out of New York City. I enjoyed my chat with Kayla. She's a good egg. Uh, just a little heads up, there are some cuss words in this episode in, in case you have your mom or your children or uh, your pastor uh, in the car with you while you listen to this. Uh, I didn't bleep anything out because I, I don't, I don't want to bleep people out on this podcast. I'd rather have people freely express themselves and keep the integrity of that expression than have beeps in the podcast. It's super distracting. Someone's talking, you're listening, you're engaged, and then you hear, it just, I don't know. I don't like it. It throws me off. So uh, you're going to hear a couple of words. Um, (laughs) It's a fun chat, and she teaches me how to beatbox at the end. So it's a lot of fun. Stick around for that. Uh, hey, do you have anyone you'd like for me to interview? Tweet me at there it is pod, and you can suggest people who are, uh, uh, you know, working in the field, creating things, uh, especially people in comedy. If uh, you want to hear how they create that stuff, uh, then then suggest them, and I'll try to get them on. Suggest it to them, and I will try to get them on. I'd love to get Lauren Lapkus on, or. Uh, I don't know, Scott Ackerman, a lot of people I'd love to have on. So if you'd like, uh, if you'd like those people, suggest it to me and them on Twitter. It won't bother them. Yeah, it will. Don't do that. Um, just tweet me. Tweet me and me alone. Do not annoy those people. <laughs> they would be great guests. Speaking of great guests, let's get to this episode's great guest, Kayla Milady, right after this break. Alchemy Comedy Theater will be holding its third annual Comedy Marathon from June 10th through June 11th, featuring the best of Greenville comedy for 30 hours of nonstop entertainment. The marathon will kick off with a live podcast celebrating the Greenville comedy scene at 6 p.m. and continue through the night with vast sampling of various comedy forms. And we are also going to see some long form, some stand-up comedy from Greenville's No Expectations Comedy, uh, fast Paced improv games with alchemy and laughing stock, and there'll be live storytelling as well. Four of alchemy's performing members will take on the feat of performing in 12 improv shows in a row for the 12 hour challenge from midnight until noon, putting the marathon concept to the test. Tickets to all shows are $10, with the exception of the 12 hour challenge shows, which will be free, and pre show tickets can be purchased online at alchemycomedy.com. That's alchemy comedy.com do you toss and turn at night because you want more of the there it is podcast are you growing despondent between episodes do you often wonder where it is i'm jason farr and you may have their itis there is no cure for their itis but you can join a support group the their itis foundation Support the There It Is podcast to keep your Thereitis at bay, as in B-A-E. Go to thereitispod.com and click the support button. You can support one time only or become a monthly supporter. Supporting the Thereitis Foundation allows for us to keep getting the word out about Thereitis through the blog on thereitispod.com and the podcast. You don't catch Thereitis. Thereitis catches you. But it's okay. And I should know, I too have their itis. I'm gonna make a master out of you today. <laughs> that sounds good. Well, thanks for being here. Yeah, of course, man. It's good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you too, Kayla. Now we met just for the listeners. Uh, <coughs> we met um, years ago, a couple years ago, uh, at uh, here in Greenville at the yep. New South Comedy Festival because you're mm-hmm. beatboxing for North Coast. And then I saw you uh, a couple times after that, I think. And I'll tell you one thing. 
I feel like you're one of the few people that has confidence or, or, or self-esteem. <laughs> like, honestly, there's a, a, a cool vibe about you that just exudes. Like, most people... <laughs> Very mysterious, man, I say, you know? <laughs> As you brush your shoulders off. Mm -hmm. uh, no, but I feel like a lot of comedians, when I'm around a lot of people at a, a comedy festival, they're not. a lot of them aren't making eye contact. But when I saw you... And I said, oh, okay, Kayla, hey, you know, you gave me this big hug and you made direct eye contact with me and yeah, didn't I break it. About. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, uh, being the beatboxer, I'm not like that self-loathing comedian, you know what I mean? I could be happy and it makes my job better. Right. Where if you're most comedians, you know, you got to have that sadness to get the jokes out. Yeah. And I'm I in a good position. It's, it was so, like, just in that moment, I was like, this is the coolest person I know. <laughs> like, yeah. like, Jack Nicholson cool. <laughs> I'm, like, foot on the brick wall smoking a cigarette cool sometimes. Yeah. And then yeah. other times, you know, I go snowboarding and I break my wrist first time going down the mountain. I so, see that. I see that. You like, you like that cast? You got some yeah, stickers? Yeah, I see you got a cast uh, in the Skype call here. You got a little cast. So, you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But you, but you handle it like a champ. Yeah, at the end of the day, I'm going to hug the person that I'm dealing with, you know? <laughs> Leave the bodega, give the guy a hug. Go to the bank, <laughs> give the teller a hug. I'm a hugger. What can I say? I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah, that's awesome. That's why you're one of the uh, greatest people I know. Uh, Fun? Well, so you, how? let's talk first about music before we get into North Coast and everything you do with that. So you, you are a beatboxer, but you also play guitar and you write music how did you get into music uh i was like a kid where if you gave like two centimeters uh filled in a cup with soda i would be doing cartwheels around the house uh <laughs> i would definitely if it was probably like today's day and age i probably would have got like adhd medicine or some shit but um yeah i just always loved it my dad was kind of crazy and in his uh last like crazy move before my parents got divorced he bought like this little baby grand piano. I don't know where the fuck he got this money from, but he just like did whatever. And uh, so I played on that for a little bit and I was definitely like a pots and pans kid. So I always loved music. And uh, luckily my, my mom and my parents were really supportive uh, over just like my music stuff. Uh, so I, I saw a um, Santa Claus letter like a couple months ago from when I was like five. And it was like a super snooper, which I don't know what the hell that is, but I still <laughs> want it. So I'm going to go like search on Amazon for that. And then it was like guitar and drums and all that stuff. Uh, so luckily my mom would get me like really, you know, like second, third, fourth hand, twice removed cousins of good instruments to me. You know, like yeah. the pots and pans, like garbage can drums. But, uh, you know, they definitely supported that. The only thing that my mom ever told me that I couldn't play, I went on a, in like sixth grade. I saw a, um, a video in my music class of the spoons, people playing spoons. And I went on like a three month spoon kick. Where all I did all around the house was just like, you know, bang on shit. And then my mom just ripped it out of my hands one day. She's like, never again. You are done with this. <laughs> so, you know, I still resent her because I think I could have had a Grammy already with mm -hmm. my playing folk <laughs> album. But beatboxing is working for now. Yeah, it is. It is going well. So how old were you when all that, when you started getting into, like, playing instruments? Uh, I was like... I mean, I started dabbling with instruments when I was like five. Then when I was probably like 10 years old, I started learning guitar. And around that time, too, I would just always mimic. Like if it was like Backstreet Boys, I'm like, it wasn't good, you know, but I just would always jam out to music. Um, so I probably really was beatboxing and playing guitar around the same time, like nine or 10 years old. Yeah, cool. That's awesome. Have you? Did you go to school at all for music, or did you? Or you, you're all self taught? Yeah, I just uh, taught myself stuff. Like I said, my parents would, uh, or I would like, you know, just save up some money and buy like a little keyboard. And then, luckily, you know, the internet era, I would just go online and go on YouTube or something and figure out how to play a song and kind of took it from there. Yeah, you exude music. Oh, that's thanks. It's a, a mark of a true artist to be able to be as talented as you are from picking up on it. Like, that's that's awesome. That's great. Thanks, man. Some people call it Tourette's. Some people call it beatboxing, you know? <laughs> Just get a task it. <laughs> so, um, been doing music pretty much most of your life since uh, a very young age. Uh, yeah. 
very well, but doing music. <laughs> and well, the stuff I've heard has been great. Uh, I have some friends who have a podcast and they start their pod. Two of them start the podcast out beatboxing and uh, just doing like saying silly stuff over it just to start the podcast. And uh, they're they're good beatboxers, but I mean, compared to you, like if if uh, if you're a nine or a ten, they're probably at like a six or a seven. So I was like, guys, you need to see her. Uh, this is a world class beatboxer. Yeah, come um, find battle. Right. Right, yeah, and they did. they were put this. the shame. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they were certainly put the shame. Uh, and then you got into comedy at some point. So when I mean now, how much of the comedy world are you in? Is it just North Coast? Are you doing any other comedy related things? Um, not so much right now, just because I'm so um kind of busy with music. Music is kind of taking a full time thing, but um. I always did improv. Like I picked it up when I was in high school and I kind of fell in love with that. And I actually never thought that I was going to be a musician ever. I, that, that was kind of my own personal uh, hobby. I mm -hmm. took it as, but like acting and comedy was like, that's what I was going for. And uh, I went to school into college for like a year and then I dropped out. Uh, but I did some acting and stuff there. And um, yeah, it, what happened was I was doing improv in the city before I really knew about North Coast. And my level one teacher, Leslie Collins, heard that I beatbox. And she's like, you should you should find out North Coast. Like North Coast does beatboxing and all this stuff. Um, and then a couple months later, I broke my back. Or actually, it was like a year later, I broke my back. So it was really hard for me to do theater or be on stage unless I was like a cactus or a coat rack or like a robot or, you know, something like that. So... I stopped doing like improv and theater for a while. And then after I broke my back at that time, like I also never knew that there was a beatboxing community and uh, I wasn't too good until like four years ago. It was more just like. Oh, so better than most people. Oh yeah. You know, so. <laughs> this so. Is like, I wasn't good at it. This is what I did. Something that's yeah, way you know, like, better. Back in the day, it was just like. <laughs> It was like nothing, man. It was like real horse shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> kind of like dirty farts. Oh um, my like, gosh. Uh, but that was all still like really impressive. Is it, oh, is it even possible for you at this stage of like you're so advanced at it? Is it even possible for you to sound like a beginner beatboxer? It's hard. That's a thing. Like me trying to be what I sounded like before, I can't really do. But it, uh, just trust me, it wasn't that good before. Well, everyone's uh, got to start somewhere. Yeah, exactly. I mean, even now, it's fart noises. Let, like, let's be honest. I'm a con artist. I'm just making fart noises into a microphone. I don't know how things are working out the I, way they I right. told you that once when we talked about this. I said, uh, you were telling me about it. I was like, oh, that's kind of like making fart noises. It just, <laughs> with your mouth, it just sounds better. Yeah. I'm just super, like you said, I'm just super confident. That's how I sell my crap. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> As long as you got a good smile on your face, you dance along to it, you'll trick people. I'd love to see a uh, competition where that's all someone is doing. It's going... <laughs> it's and like the, the bass sound. <laughs> that sound, like, sometimes when you hear a car drive by with a lot of bass, that's what it sounds like on the outside of the car. Is <laughs> Yo, people bump it along. I have a, I think I have like a disease now. It's like beatboxer mine where like, especially in New York City, because there's so many people, let's uh -huh. say someone has like a suitcase and they're rolling it down the block and it's like, I'm like, oh shit, beatboxer, where, where, where's the sniper at? Where are we jamming at? And then I look around like a scared child for a, a little bit and realize I'm alone and <laughs> there is no beatboxer. I'm we, going crazy. We kind of glossed over the backbreaking situation here. Oh Yeah. I mean. So, uh, yeah, so what happened was when I broke my back, obviously I stopped doing theater for a, a bit. Mm -hmm. And during, during before that time, I met another beatboxer who um, grew up in Long Island with me. That's where I'm from. And he was actually, like, the best beatboxer at the time there. Like, he was a 2011 American beatbox champ. His name is Jay mm -hmm. Flo. He's absolutely incredible. And uh, it just so happened, like, I was with my best friend, Sam, who's heard me beatbox my whole life. Like, I've been doing it since I was in fifth grade. But this one week, we would get drunk and go to parties, and she'd, like, please be mine for me so you know six days in a row she asked me and i would do that shit on the seventh day we go to this party and she's like Kila, please be monks for me and i was like you know what sam no i am not your puppet i am nobody's monkey like i'm not just gonna dance for you when you ask me to dance she's like please Kila, please <laughs> i was like no 
And I was really, we got into like a little argument about it. And I was like, you know what, Sam? Fine. And for 10 seconds, I was just like, you happy now? And then like the voice of God came throughout the party. was like, who just beat Bob? <laughs> and everyone in the back just went really silent. And like Moses in the Red Sea, the people just parted. And uh, he was there. So when I broke my back, uh, he introduced me to other beatboxers. And like I said, like when I was in high school or even like four years ago, I wasn't that good. Like I had good flow, but I wouldn't, I, I would myself watch beatboxing videos of like champions and people around the world. And I was like, okay, I can like beatbox, but these people are crazy people. Mm-hmm. Like these are aliens. They're not real. Um, but seeing him in front of me and him like doing his thing, I was like, holy shit. Like this is a thing that this person is doing in front of me. Mm-hmm. And then he introduced me to the rest of the freaks uh, in the community. Um <laughs> And uh, these circus acts, you know what I mean? Um, but when I met them, I was like, oh, damn, this is awesome. And I learned a bunch of sounds. And uh, at that time, I also got, like, really screwed over with, like, my workers' comp and stuff like that. So, like, I wasn't making money. I couldn't work for, like, six or seven months. So uh, I met another beatboxer. His name is Kid Lucky. And he ended up being, like, my mentor. And he was like, hey, why don't you just come to the city? Uh, let's see what's going on. And we ended up talking for like seven hours about, um, it's beat rhyming, right? So beat rhyming is when I talk and beatbox at the same time. So mm-hmm. can you break it down to the sound? Yes, sir. Can you say kiss a round, right? Yeah. So he taught me that that day. And because I came from a theater world, I was like, <laughs> oh shit. If I can talk and I can beatbox, I can create like theater shows where it's just all me doing everything. So um, he was um, very heavily into like, you know, like hip hop and rap and all this stuff. And I tried out for show choir when I was in sixth grade, Color of the Wind. And I was so nervous that I sang like this. I was like, can you sing with all the voices? And then never sang again for like seven years. I was just like mortified. Oh. Uh, but when I was working with him, he really pushed me on like the music side. And uh, I started doing more beat rhyming stuff. And then I did the, I, my first battle was a 2013 American Beatbox Championships. Yeah. And Patrick Kakuda, who's also, he's a beatboxer and an improviser, uh, we met uh, at the pit in New York City and we realized like, holy shit, we both love beatboxing and we both love improv. Uh, so there's a bar in New York City called Pioneers. Mm-hmm. It's got a dope sound system. So after the one of the nights of the beatbox battle, we just went there and we had like a beatboxing show. And Doug and Robo from North Coast just so oh, happened cool. to be there. And they saw me and Kid do our stuff. And they saw a bunch of other beatboxers do their stuff. But I think that me and Kid, since we were beat rhyming, we were creating like a story together. And like we were improving off each other. We like asked for a word and then we were like, we're rapping with it. So um, Doug asked me, he was like, hey do you want to just help do this, like teach a workshop with me? So I did that and I went to this workshop and I was like, what is this? Like, <laughs> what is hip hop improv? And I just saw how much fun it was. And uh, after that, it was pretty, pretty easy guess that it just kind of merged. Yeah. yeah. I mean, worlds collided for you in the best way possible in that situation. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, you mentioned Doug and Robo, two great guys. A uh, uh, whole team of people who are great. How so? Now let's uh, collide some other things, merge some other things here. You'd uh, been doing music, you'd done some improv. Now you met North Coast. One of the things that I noticed, there are a ton of things to notice about how great North Coast is, and all the things that is that's happening on stage. Uh, the thing I want to talk about with you right now that's I find really interesting. And we've talked about this in the past, but uh, how you utilize you're you're basically uh, uh, editing scenes and telling people, all right, this is when the song should come in. Uh, how did that grow? Like, uh, is that something that through your improv background you knew? Oh, this is the time to edit the scene. Yeah. So improv totally helps me. Um, we have some other beatboxers on the team that play with us and they're amazing, amazing beatboxers. But I think the thing that really helps me with North coast is the fact that I've, and I am an improviser. So I know when the game of the scene is, I know when we hit the relationship, I know when like they got enough meat to make the song and also when it's over. Um, mm-hmm. So it's one of those things like I know what I would do in the scene and kind of when it's supposed to end. So it really helps um, soundscaping from an improviser because you're looking at it from an improviser standpoint, like, what type of song it should be to or like what the emotion of the scene is so matching that 
Um, but I definitely think it helps. And uh, it's, you know, it's like any, it, it's like I am an improviser on the team. Sometimes I jump in the scenes, not as much if we have a big cast, but I am there to support the improvisers musically. So knowing how the scene should go, it I can help them in that regard. Huge tip for any improvisers who want to start doing musical improv. That's a huge, huge tip. Uh, mm-hmm. Cool knowledge right there. So what do you, so, uh, and sometimes like even when you edit a scene where you're, when you're going into a song, it's not even just you start beatboxing. Cause I've also noticed you'll start uh, doing a lyric. You take one of their lines and make it a lyric of the song. Mm-hmm. And- so we, with North coast, right. We usually have like three ways of getting into a scene. I mean, North coast, I improvise, but not anywhere on the level that the rest of my team does. They're absolutely, they're geniuses. And every time I watch them play, I'm like, Whoa. And I just yeah. learn so much. So, um, we usually have a couple of ways to get in either I'll see, I'll see that, you know, it's time for a song and I'll drop a beat and they trust that, you know, I'm giving, I'm doing this because they have it and they'll go with it. Or maybe we'll drop a hook about what's going on in the scene. So, um, you know, if it's two dads trying to be cool for their, you know, for their son, we'll drop a hook about that and get the song going. And then if they drop a, like if one of, you know, if Doug's not in the scene, but drops a hook on the sideline, I'll immediately come in with a beat. Another thing that could happen is maybe just the people in the scene will just start rapping. So, of course, if they start rapping, I'm going to jump in with a beat with them, too, and make it very seamless. And uh, we play together a lot. Um, so we kind of we have very good group mind happening. And uh, oh, yeah. we oh, yeah. definitely are very keen on, like, this is the song and everyone jumping in at once to support that. Um, so I think that's something that's very special when we play. Yeah. I mean, special is the right word. If people out there listening have not seen North Coast, do everything you can to see North Coast. Uh, I mean, there really are a lot of special things going on. We could do a whole a podcast or two uh, about North Coast alone. Um, let's talk a little bit more about uh, beatboxing, though. Um, you have a lot of accolades. You, uh, uh, like I said, you're a world star hip a beatboxer because you won the world championships, female world champion last year. Yeah, true. Yeah, uh, yeah you um, have a couple of others, too. Yeah, I got a couple. I got a couple of championships up my sleeve. Um, yeah, it's really fun. I mean, for me, I'm not very competitive as a person, but definitely, like, there's not that many girls in the scene at all. And uh, like, when I met the guys, it's it's also a stereotype that girls aren't good at beatboxing. And America, we're we're one of the only country that doesn't segregate men and women in battling. So, like, I came in second place two years ago. I won a I won like a beat round battle three times and I won the loop station championship two times. And that's what guys and girls. And I think that that's really important because, um, girls tend to be more musical. Like I use my voice and singing mm-hmm. and guys are a little bit more heavier. But the thing is, it's like in other countries, let's say they split the girls and the boys. What happens? It's like, it's not the girls physically can't do a bass sound or they physically can't do this. Um, they get told that they can't do this and that they shouldn't try. So they don't, practice and they don't spar with people that are the top of the top because they're told to stay in their own lane type of thing. So, um, for me, the new generation of the beatbox scene, we kind of all, um, met about three, four years ago, like 2012, uh, thanks. My mentor was putting on, kid was putting on a bunch of festivals and we all kind of met each other there and, uh, everyone, you know, nobody was like chauvinistic about it. We're all family. Everyone was just sharing. And, uh, because I did have, because I was good at beatboxing, I guess. And, uh, I've been doing it, you know, even my basic sounds, I was learning harder stuff that was new, but for 10 years before that, I was just doing like, (laughs) so my drums were really good, but, uh, I don't, I wouldn't normally like battle, but being the only girl, I was like, Oh, I kind of have to battle. Like I have to show all these people that are saying that girls can't do it, that girls can do it. Um, so it was, you know, it's really fun for me and it's a good push for the community. The guys, because I was learning beat rhyming, the guys had to learn how to like sing or rap while they beatbox. Because if we were on stage, the whole thing is like, you know, the guys can do the really low notes, but I can do all the high stuff. And if we can both do something, if I can, if I can speak while I can beatbox and they can't, then I'll win. So we, it's good because it pushed everybody and they became more musical. I became, you know, I got more sounds from them. We all, we all work together um, so, I mean, it was really cool winning the female world championships cause I'm proud and there's so many new girls coming up now in the scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just did like a online battle of all these girls and these girls are so nasty. Um, uh, but it also kind of sucked because like, 
you know, I was kind of like, why are you putting me in a different category? Like I came in second place for our country. And right now, like America is like the best in the world, uh, beatboxing wise. Awesome. So it was one of those things where it was kind of like, it was really cool. But I was also like, why are you putting me in a different category? Right. Like, it's, it's not so like, it's not stupid. like playing basketball like, or something like that. Where you have we're to not separate. Weights, <laughs> right. You know right. I mean? like, we're doing fart noises. So it's like, you're <laughs> telling me that I can't do fart noises. Like yeah. people say that girls can't poop, but let me tell you something. I took a joke. <laughs> All right. Wait a minute. Ladies poop? Diarrhea, bro. Flowing what? out the butt. That can't be. I mean, uh, it does like roses, but it's gross. <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, I mean, that's... The, I think the thing that I'm taking back uh, as I, I, mean, I have a show later, so what I'm taking in uh, is being knowledgeable of all the things that are there to be like if it's musical improv then being knowledgeable of improv is good being knowledgeable of music is good mm -hmm. and also the big thing that i'm taking from you and, and definitely it's great it's an inspiration for women out there who are you know marginalized and told they can't do something but even for me when i believe i can't do something what i'm also learning from you is challenge yourself yourself go out there and do it and mm -hmm. show them that you can yeah I, that's awesome. That's great. I say that's awesome a lot, but okay. <laughs> uh, but I mean it's it. It's awesome to believe in yourself, man. That's like one of those uh, inspirational posters. It's like a cat hanging upside down, and it just says, "It's awesome to believe in yourself." <laughs> we should. Someone should mock up a poster of you hanging upside down with those words. No, let's do it. I'll give you five percent for the idea, but I'm taking the rest. I'm <laughs> it's rest. fine by me. Yeah. Fine by me. No, but um, man, like even uh, like with beatboxing, I remember if I told people like I'm gonna beatbox, they were like, "What? That is not a career path. Like, what are you gonna do beatboxing?" But um, like I started street performing, and you know, four years later, uh, I'm really blessed enough to be able to travel, like go down to festivals, meet people like you, go to different places in the world, and just perform and do what I like to do. And I think it's one of those things where if you put time and energy into anything, it's gonna succeed. It's yeah. just how you're divvy divvying your time. So if you put all your energy into something, it's going to grow and you're going to, you know, succeed in what you want to do. That's a good note. That's a good note for us to transition on. It's been great having you on the podcast. Now it's time for you to teach me how to beatbox. Boom, let's do it. Well, so here's where I'm at. Let me just show you my level. I can do the basic boots and cats. Just okay. And I can also do the old fat boys. <laughs> Oh, you got a little buff master over here. Well, who? I never hear that anymore. So I feel like I, I'm I'm ready for the next level, and dude, I can of course ready. make fart noises. Yeah, dude, you're ready. Okay, so let's do. Since you got your bead down, let's do a little. Let's do a little like electro. Like, let's do a little like electronic stuff, right? Okay. So this one's um. Don't be scared. Mama's got you. Don't worry. Mama's got you. Um. So it's like a. You're gonna make like a snore sound or almost like a pig sound, right? So it's like. <laughs> yeah right so it's like um but what you're doing too is like so instead of it being in your nose you're kind of going to pull it back to your throat so it's like <laughs> yeah so you're, now you're gonna go <laughs> yeah okay so then you go <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute see but i forgot how to do it that fast all right all right so you can do it slow <laughs> yeah so Was now that right yeah, so now go like this, go like, go like, boom, tim, tim. Boom, boom, boom. No, you went boom, boom, ting, boom, boom, like boom goes the dynamite, Tim, boom, like friend tim, 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 and then okay. like Tim, like that girl that you had sex with one time. <laughs> boom, ting, boom. So boom, Tim, Kim, boom, Tim, Kim, boom, Tim, Kim. There you go. Boom, Tim, Kim. And then boom, <laughs> Tim, boom. <laughs> Yeah, so like boom, snore, boom. So boom, snore, Kim, snore. Boom, oh. snore, Kim, snore. Okay. Boom. Kim. Kim. Yeah. Kim. Yeah, so boom. Real slow. Real. <laughs> Kim. Boom. Kim. Yeah. So, try this, try this whole thing. So you're gonna go boom, Tim, Kim, boom, Tim, Kim, 
Okay, I don't know if I remember the pattern, but... Watch this, ready? Okay. I'm going to message it to you, because this is what technology <laughs> is allowing us to do, right? That's right. Okay. Yeah! <laughs> we got a new champion in the house! Oh, sweet! <laughs> Uh, Kayla, you're the best. You're the best, Jason. It's great to talk to you. Great to talk to you, too. And really great to see all those sweaters and tuxedos and ball gowns you got in your closet behind you. Oh, yeah. I wish they were tuxedos, and I really wish they were ball gowns. I know, but- <laughs> Jason. One day, your Prince Charming will come. Don't worry. <laughs> um, no, seriously, thanks for being on. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course, man. It's good to talk to you. Good luck with everything, and have fun at your show tonight. Thank you, thank you. And uh, when's your next show? Um, I have a show tomorrow with North Coast. We have a show every Saturday. Uh, and then I'm doing a tour with my group full of beatboxers that I actually live with. Uh, I live in a house full of all beatboxers. It's called Beatbox House. So we're going to be up through like Buffalo, upper New York region, and then through Canada, like Toronto and stuff. So uh, definitely anyone online who wants to check out some beatboxing, check out The Beatbox House. All right, there it is. There you have it, people. Another episode of There It Is. Kayla was great, wasn't she? And uh, I really enjoy her. And now I am a world star beatboxer. Check this out. Check this out. This is how I sound now when I beatbox because of her her teaching and my practicing. Kim, Kim, Kim. So good, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Kayla. You were great. Uh, to get more info on Kayla, go to KaylaMalady.com. Her name is spelled K-A-I-L-A-M-U-L-L-A-D-Y. And also check out the Beatbox House website, BeatboxHouse.com. They are done with a tour that they were going on that she mentioned, but uh, definitely go to those websites, see where you can see them again. You might be sitting there thinking, hey, people support podcasts. How can I support? There it is. Well, for one, thank you for the question. You can support this very podcast by going to thereitis.com and clicking on support. It is much appreciated. This episode of There It Is has been brought to you in part by Michael Robinette, Kelly and Tom Byers, Nico Estevez, Disclaimer Comedy, and Evan Harris. Thank you all so much for your support. Check out the next episode. My guests will be Katie and Marie of the Reformed Tours. They are awesome, awesome people. I'm Jason Farr. This has been There It Is. Be good to each other. The music for the theme song was created by Neil Brooks. The rap was written and performed by Nick Acevedo. The logo for There It Is was created by Jeff Prater. The There It Is podcast is produced by Jason Farr.